love poem. Not a, any specific person, people, place, or position. No, this is a love poem to a specific substance. One we are all familiar with, but one we rarely consider during moments of nasty. <laughs> Pudding! Ladies and gentlemen, I need you to pretend you're not here for these words, for they are very personal. I am concerned for your safety. <laughs> Those of you experiencing pang of, pangs of hunger, I urge you to get a snack immediately, for this is about to become porn for fat people. <laughs> All right, those of you left, if you're willing to experience a little bit of please visualize along with me. Picture a buffet unlike any other, where beautiful people of your dreams have gathered to feed you the silky delicacy known as pudding. <laughs> Imagine that they are so enveloped by ecstasy, ecstasy, so into the feast, that they keep referring to this magnificent substance as pudding, so drawn to it that they forget the letter G. <laughs> Everyone has a true love. I mean, unless you're me, but that's only because I find talking to the opposite sex scares the living bejesus out of me. <laughs> and all the other reasons. But if you're, if you're normal, then you probably have a true love. Being a man, woman, dog, not gonna judge Xander. But <laughs> if Mike McGee is a bit different because his true love is food. Mighty Mike McGee, a poetry collection by Mike McGee. I would like to take a moment to directly address that for which this poem is written. Hello, Pudding! Oh, how I miss you, baby! How I long to be near your bowl of very tiny spoons so that I may take my time and enjoy you. <laughs> to caress your shapeless existence. <laughs> Damn you, pudding! <laughs> How dare you disguise yourself? Who will you be tonight, my sweet? Perhaps a bowl of tapioca, a taste of butterscotch, or will you be more complex, donning a manila chocolate ripple, a stick, and also coming to the name Pudding Pop? <laughs> oh, pudding. Temptation is so weak. So please. Call me Wigby Wickerson when I am near you. Me and my band, the Weak Tones, will play you songs of desire and merriment. And if that doesn't work for you, my dear sweet pudding, I can always put on my Marlon Brando costume. <laughs> <laughs> the one that seems to turn you on the most, the one that gets you all thick and creamy. <laughs> those walking by would make it worth the effort. We interrupt this regular poem to bring you viable content and attempt to make it more accessible to a broader audience. Peace in the Middle East! Holla at a playa, word to the nerd! My father never loved me. <laughs> I can make a difference. I suck. You suck! The government sucks! Push to 9-11. <laughs> now back to the poem already in progress. I could cover myself with you! And go as you do a masquerade ball! <laughs> if people want to lick you off me, they always do, but I'll say no! <laughs> I will lick me, for I have a tummy. <laughs> My own tongue. And a book on yoga. However, my love is limited pudding. For I have discovered that I can't, my body cannot tolerate our passion for much longer. For you are composed with the blood of milk and sugar, and I would rather die than make you with water and sweetener. <laughs> so let us call for one last moment of nasty. Oh my God. A grand finale! In conclusion, my dearest sweet pudding, know that forever I will spell love P U D. the last letter. <laughs> but no, that will for that my love will always belong to you. Salt food. So last week the angel of death comes knocking at my door, totally interrupting perfect strangers, and I'm like, dude, you are so early. There is so much more I wanted to do with my life. 
You've had plenty of time for that. You know, you sound a bit like Sean Connery. <laughs> no, he sounds a bit like me. <laughs> Whatever, dude, look. Isn't there some sort of loophole, like some sort of contest for me to keep my soul? I love a good challenge. If we may both agree on one, then the wearer may keep your soul. At this point, I remember to have the pot of ramen noodles waiting for me on the stove. The angel of death was served in my kitchen by the sweet, aromatic Julia Packard trip flavoring. I could see he was hungry, so I made him a second pot. We sat and ate in silence, but my hunger just wouldn't subside. So, while I raided the fridge, I noticed Death scoping my Rice Krispie treats. Still hungry, dude? We'll take one for the road. Actually, I could probably eat half of all your food. So could I, dude. So could I. <laughs> and at that point, it hit us. Both at the same time. We grabbed every bit of food in my fridge and put it out on the floor, dividing it into equal halves. We had one rule. First person to finish their half would keep my soul. <laughs> we sat down on the floor, surrounded by an odd buffet, and the world's greatest food challenge began. But this was no ordinary match. I took an early lead as Death fumbled, opening a can of refried beans. I plowed my way through a dozen eggs and a half gallon of milk, and I strategically swallowed spoonful after spoonful of leftover lasagna. Death got up to me with a tub of butter and half a soggy pumpkin pie. I plowed my way through cans of corn, green beans, kidney beans, chicken soup, fruit cocktail, and a few cans of peas. But I was stopped dead in my tracks by a mystery can. It's labeled missing and nowhere to be found. <laughs> Damn it! Dog food. <laughs> no time to think, I had to eat it. <laughs> Death was now ahead of me by, uh, what was it, uh, two cans of beer, uh, a frozen steak, and what we think may have been tamales. <laughs> I burped to make room and continued on the feast for my soul. I hustled my way through, uh, let's see, what was it? Broccoli, cauliflower, broccoli, no, I already said that. Uh, I ate a lot of it. Uh, oranges, bananas, a jug of Pepto-Bismol, I was sick for a week after that. Some salt, two cups of salt and pepper, uh, a box of baking soda, that was awful, <laughs> and the worst part of all, a can of whipped cream. Ugh. We reached our last item of food. One raw potato each. We both gnawed our way through our potato and swallowed our last bites at the exact same time. It looked as though we had a draw, but then death handed me my half of uneaten jello. I grabbed a straw and sucked it down, saying, There is always room for jello. But he just smiled and said, I believe I finished my half before you. Your soul is mine. But I outsmiled him and said, What's that in your pocket? His face sunk as he reached down and pulled out, Yep, the last Rice Krispie treat. He looks at me with fear as I hand him, my rapper, <laughs> and swallow a crispy mouthful of marshmallow goodness. I believe I win. With that, he bowed and vanished. I sat down to an episode of the Full House and ordered a pizza. <laughs> because there is never anything to eat at my house! <laughs> Subject.